Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome. Today, I'm looking at one game on two computers. The game I'll be looking at is Protector 2. This game was originally released by Synapse Software for the Atari 8-bit family in 1982. We're going to look at two ports of this game released in 1983. We'll look at the C64 version programmed by Ken Rose and the Coco version programmed by Robert Black. First, we have to look at the instruction book. The instruction book that I have here is actually for the Atari 400 or 800 version. However, the game is the same across all versions, so the instruction book should be pretty much the same other than uh, different loading instructions and um, stuff like that. Just the uh, differences between the computers. And of course, this instruction book does not disappoint when it comes to a backstory for this game. In this one, it reads, You are the last hope. The alien slime lords of Fraculus are attacking your cities. One by one, the inhabitants are being exterminated by the invincible Fraxalan mothership. It moves relentlessly, drawing up the helpless natives and fiendishly carrying them to Dragon Maw, the sulfurous volcano of death, and then incinerating them and you are the sole protector. This senseless killing must stop. You must save these innocent victims from their gruesome destiny. After you launch your Omnicron needle fighter from your base deep inside the Zlar defense post and fly through the booby-trapped laser caves of fear, you must transport your people over the mountains to the city of New Hope. The aliens and fate conspire against you at every turn. The Fraxalan mothership launches Zionic pulse trackers to destroy you. Meteor showers rain from the heavens, and Dragon Maw threatens to erupt at any moment. Every second is precious. And you know that the survivors will not be safe for long, even in the city of New Hope. The volcano will inevitably explode. Painstakingly, every man, woman, and child must be flown past the laser fields of the Strack and into the mighty Viridan Fortress. It is here that you must pass through the ultimate test. Your mouth is dry, and the sweat trickles down your face as you strain against the impossible odds. There is no time to think, only to do. It has fallen on your shoulders. You are the last hope. You are are the protector. This is the color computer version. The idea of this game is to pick up each of the people that are on the ground and buildings and transport them to the next city during an alien invasion. This is very much in the style of Defender. You even have an enemy ship that picks up your people, although rather than turning them into alien ships, it drops them in a volcano. Now we'll switch over to the C64 version. Once all of the people have been evacuated from the first city, or killed, you must move them again. This time you have to take them to an underground bunker. If you have not moved all the people from the first city, the bunker will have a force field over it, making it inaccessible. All the while you have to avoid enemy ships, missiles fired from the surface, and even an erupting volcano. The first thing to compare is the title screen. The C64 has a better looking title screen, however, it is an all-in-one, whereas the Coco has a title screen and a screen that introduces all of the characters of the game. Even though the Coco uses lower res graphics, I have to say I like it better. The title music is very similar, but I do have to give the edge to the Coco as it sounds more lively than the C64. Here they are for reference. Mm -hmm. 
Moving into the gameplay, we start with the sound effects. Both computers have very good sound effects. Nothing that takes away from the game. However, I would say that the C64 wins this one due to the fact that it has a much better thrust sound for your ship. Whereas the Coco, it has a weird thumping tone. Here they are. As for the actual playing of the game, there's very little difference in the mechanics of each version. The biggest difference is that I found the Coco one to be a lot harder. The C64 version was still very challenging, but I found it easier to avoid hitting things as your ship moves a little slower. In time, I think I'd probably learn to be a lot better on the Coco and then would probably find the C64 version to be a little slow. But just starting out, I think I like the C64 version better in the category of gameplay. When it comes to the graphics, both are very good. They both look very similar. The only difference being the Coco is a slightly lower resolution and the solid colors are checkered rather than solid. So if I have to choose a winner here, it would be the C64, but by the very narrowest of margins. So, which game is better? This was very close. I think both games are excellent examples of the Defender-style game that was so popular back in the 80s, and they are both well worth playing. If I had to pick a winner, I would say probably the C64 wins, but only by the tiniest little bit. Simply due to the better looking graphics and the gameplay being a little bit easier at the start. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget that a like, subscribe, and comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot and are greatly appreciated. Until next time, have a great day.